The Sabbath has been the hallmark of our people for more than 3,000 years. It's a special day of rest that they set apart for the Lord. And it's been said that more than the Jews keeping the Sabbath, the Sabbath has kept the Jews. And yet it's possible to keep the Sabbath faithfully without finding true rest. Perhaps there's one key ingredient that's missing. I'm here in the Diamond District of Manhattan, a place where many religious Jews work, but today's Friday. That means for them this work day will end early so that they can be home for the highlight of their week, the beginning of the Sabbath. Now to be perfectly honest with you, although my mother and father are Jewish, I didn't grow up in a Sabbath observant home, so I never really had appreciation for the beauty and power of the day. But if you all talk to religious Jews, they'll have nothing but praise for the Sabbath, a day of rest, a day to break away from the busyness of life, a day set apart for spiritual reflection and for family. And that's why even here, in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of New York City, in the midst of a highly competitive jewelry market, the Sabbath still rules. And so thousands of these men and women will end their workday early to honor this unique and special day. What is it that makes the Sabbath so special? Let me start out by asking, what does the Sabbath mean to you? It, it doesn't mean anything to me. It just means, uh, you know, a day that I can't hang out with my Jewish friends. That's it. Well, the Sabbath is, uh, I don't know, I celebrate Shabbat. So uh, it's a weekly thing where you get together with your family and just celebrate the Sabbath. You rest, you relax. Many of my friends uh, are Jewish and some of them observe the Sabbath. And um, I guess I sort of think of it as defining a sacred time during the week um, to observe certain roles the same way for Christians we do that sort of on Sunday. I think you can live a good life and a, a loyal life and without having to rest the seventh day or fast 25 hours like they do. I've always taken the seven day week for granted. I expect all of us do. I mean after all hasn't the whole world always operated on the basis of a seven day week? Actually the answer is no. Are you a little surprised? Well Let's think about it. Having 12 months in the year makes sense because each month was originally based on a new moon and the period from one new moon to the next new moon was roughly 30 days. And the one year cycle makes sense, either based on a lunar calendar, 12 new moons, equaling about 354 days, or solar calendar, one revolution around the sun, which equals about 365 days. Where do we get a seven day week? Well, there is some debate among historians on the subject, but the best answer is this. The world got the seven-day week from us, from the Jewish people, from our own Torah. Listen to these well-known words, which are part of the Ten Commandments, the most famous laws ever given in world history. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. There you have it. The week is seven days long. You work for six, you rest on the seventh. There's order, there's structure, there's rest, there's renewal. Well, we take all this for granted, but it really is an amazing concept. And in ancient Israel, you did not play games with the command to rest on the Sabbath. In fact, as harsh as this may sound, in the Torah, there was a death penalty for breaking the Sabbath. Of course, that penalty was abolished a long time ago, but religious Jews will still tell you that the main reason that they keep the Sabbath is out of love, not out of obligation. So what is it that makes the Sabbath so special? Before we move on, I'm just wondering, do you keep the Sabbath? Not at all. <laughs> um, I don't even recognize the Sabbath, to be honest with you. I do not keep the Sabbath, but I have many friends that do. So. 
I like I like being able to drive and do all that kind of stuff on the weekends. Probably not as much as I'd like to, you know, kind of lose track of time and don't have that opportunity to sit and rest, especially in a place that's so frantic like New York. I'm working on my own version of that. So, yeah, I mean, working in the garden for an hour on Sunday is a way to keep the Sabbath. Um, I try. This is New York. If you look at traditional Jewish Sabbath observance from the outside in, it can seem quite stifling and legalistic. In the Torah, God said, don't do any work on the Sabbath without explaining all the details of what exactly work meant. So over the centuries, the rabbis filled in the blanks and boy, did they fill them in. Here are just some of the Sabbath laws that are observed today. It is permissible to scratch one's head or beard lightly, and one need not be afraid that one might thereby pull out some of the hairs. It is also permissible to extract the remains of food stuck in one's beard, so long as one takes care not to pull out any of the hair. One is allowed to remove loose dandruff from one's hair with one's hand, but one must be careful not to remove dandruff which is still attached to the skin. One may neither comb one's hair nor brush one's hair with a hard brush. Okay, how about these laws? One is allowed on Sabbath to wash one's face, hands, and feet, or other individual parts of the body in water, which was heated before Sabbath. One is generally not allowed to wash or shower the whole or the major part of one's body in such water, even if one does so bit by bit. A person who is used to washing the whole of his body in warm water every day and will suffer extreme discomfort should he not do so, or someone who is ill may wash the whole of his body, even on Sabbath, in warm water, provided that it was heated before Sabbath. Does this sound burdensome to you? Well, Sabbath laws like this can be multiplied thousands of times over, but for religious Jews, their way of life, something they're raised in, they actually find holiness in the details. For them, it's not binding, it's liberating. Next. People need to be at rest. People need to, yeah, they are absolutely not. Um, you know, no one in this city is at rest. There's one thing that separates the Jewish religion from all other faiths. It's the seventh day Sabbath, a special day of rest set apart for the Lord. And all of us certainly need rest. Now, one Jewish philosopher described the Sabbath as a, a sanctuary in time, which is really an amazing concept. Now, just think about it. Many church buildings or synagogues have a special room called the sanctuary, and it's set apart for one purpose only, to meet with God. People go into that physical location to get away from the hustle and bustle of life and to focus on spiritual things. But the Sabbath is a sanctuary in time, a day set apart from the rest of the week in which worshipers can enter into a place of rest and renewal. Really, this is quite a concept. So it's not surprising then that the leaders in ancient Israel, the prophets and the lawgivers and the teachers, put such an emphasis on the Sabbath. I mean, after all, if we can't set apart one day a week for the Lord, it's not likely that the rest of our lives are going to be in any kind of spiritual order. And when the people of Israel didn't keep the Sabbath for many years, God would send them into exile so that the land could enjoy its Sabbath rest. But there's something more. When the first generation of Israelites was supposed to come into the promised land, they, they disobeyed. You probably remember the story, a whole generation died in the wilderness. And so the Psalms record God's verdict. Concerning them, I swore in my anger, they shall never come into my resting place. So not only was there the rest of the Sabbath, but the rest of entering into the promised land, something that was missed by the first generation. And yet the Psalms warn all later generations, don't be disobedient or you too will not enter into that rest. What rest? Is there a rest beyond the Sabbath? So, what do you think? Are people today at rest? Oh, no way. No way, people need to be at rest. People need to, yeah, they are absolutely not. Um, you know, no one in this city is at rest. No, I think people are restless these days. Everybody's on the move, especially here in New York. Everybody's always running, and that's different for me because in Los Angeles, not everyone's running around like this. No, not really. No, <laughs> not at all. We are one restless society today. Always on the move, always wired, especially in places like New York. I mean, you just 
watch people walking down the streets, it seems they're always in a hurry. There's the constant hustle and bustle. Another appointment, another deal to be made, another phone call to return, another email to send. We were, we were always on the go. You, even the suburbs, it's not much better. Just think of the soccer mom syndrome, going, going, going. Well, 1977, one year after my wife Nancy and I were married, we were expecting our first child. And so she said, you know, now would be a good time for us to take a vacation. It'd be the last one we can have without kids for a while. So we went to Pennsylvania, to Amish country. Now, let me put this in perspective. This was 1977, not 2008. There were no cell phones in those days. There were no PCs in those days, let alone internet or emails or e-commerce, e-everything. And who could have imagined a wireless world back in 1977? But I'll tell you, 1977 was still fast-paced with, with cars racing by and jets soaring overhead and TVs clamoring for our time. And, and I was a man on a mission, newly married, about to become a father, finishing college, about to go to grad school, about to get my first full-time job. And did I tell you, I'm a New Yorker too, so I was spending a lot of time here in the city that never sleeps. Yet the Amish live so differently, so simply, so quietly. No cars, no TVs, no keeping up with the latest technology. And I can remember one night during that vacation, laying in bed in the hotel room, and I heard a horse and buggy going down the street, just that clitter-clattering sound. And it's almost like a voice was saying to me, slow down, come away. This is a place of rest. If it was quite a contrast back in 1977, could you imagine the contrast today? It, it, this whole subject of finding rest is, is so fascinating. It was, it was an issue in the slow world of ancient Israel. It's an issue in our high-tech society today. I bet it's an issue for the Amish people too. So, so how can we find rest? I mean, a rest that's beyond the Sabbath day and a rest that's beyond the quiet life of the Amish. Could it be that true rest is not found in a day or in a place, but in a person? Could it be? Dr. Brown hit the streets in Midtown New York to get some thoughts about the Sabbath. So what, what do you guys do to slow down, wind down, chill, relax? Do you find the need to do that? Absolutely. Um, in my case, uh, I like to exercise. That helps a lot. Uh, spend as much time with friends um, and I do work around the house which I enjoy. So what about you? Do you need 12 hours a day? How many days a week do you work? Well usually seven but uh, when seven I really feel really tired you know I take a day off and my my type of uh, you know relaxing is going to my mom's house in Westchester you know swim in a pool go fishing because fishing relaxes me you know and if I really feel, feel stressed out then I ask my boss for day off you know Something like that, you know, barbecue, stuff like that. This is my sort of uh, relaxing, uh, visiting uh, great places. Do you do anything spiritual for rest? You know, religious Jews observe the Sabbath, so it's a day of rest, but it's, it's a time of spiritual renewal. Do you have any practice like that in your own life or find a need for that? Um, well, I do make sure I t take one day a week off. I don't do anything. Okay. You know, I'll relax, I'll have fun, but I won't. Uh, do the normal activities during the, during the week. So the Sabbath concept, but not as a religious thing. One day uh, off from work, but not, not in a religious way. Yes, yes, I would say that. that's the best way to put it. Okay. I usually on Sunday take a day off uh, because I want to go to church, but sometimes my boss don't want to give it to me. Uh -huh. So I go in the morning, you know. Got it, okay, <laughs> interesting. My way of, uh, of, uh, of being uh, outside uh -huh. of this, uh, of this uh, uh, world is uh, to, to have my own spirit. I don't believe in any churches, uh -huh. but I believe in, in, in Jesus Christ in my own way. You know, getting close to rush hour here, I don't know if we'd be able to get anyone who's willing to stop and talk with us. Thankfully, we got a tourist from Germany, someone from Poland's lived here a good number of years, and someone just taking a day off here from New Jersey. I'll tell you, all these different cultures, backgrounds, they still have the same thing in common. They work hard, they push hard, life is busy, and they need to wind down. Still to come. I don't really know what would be the best way to kind of get people to rest more because it's such a high competition market and everything, so everybody's always fighting for different things. So how can we find rest? God gave our people Israel the Sabbath as a 
weekly day of rest and worship, but is there something beyond that? Something that we can experience seven days a week? Let's face it, you can be alone on a tropical island with no one to bother you from miles around and still not have rest. You can go on an all expense paid vacation with someone to take care of your kids and watch your house and manage your business and still not be at rest. You, you can have all your bills paid and money in the bank and enjoy perfect health and still not be at rest. True rest has to do more with our internal condition than our external condition. And even alone on the tropical island, you can be full of worry or insecurity or guilt or, or remorse or ambition or fear. You can even be a traditional Jew in the midst of Sabbath observance and still be carrying the burden of your sins. So where can we find true rest? 20 centuries ago, a great Jewish teacher named Yeshua, better known as Jesus, said these words to all who had ears to hear. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yeshua was speaking to countless millions of people who were and are like sheep without a shepherd, burdened down with the cares of this life, burdened down with their own failings and disappointments, even burdened down with dead religious traditions. He was saying, come to me, learn from me, and you will find rest for your souls. Quite a big promise. Has he delivered? Jesus said, come to me and you'll find rest. So what, what do you think he meant by that? What I see in, the, in this is that uh, he will mean that you will find the peace in your heart. That's what I understand by, you know, you okay. find the internal quiet, you know, and uh, you, you, you know, and you will uh, feel so, so joyful and happy because you found me and you know you'll go to heaven because you're doing the right thing, you know. Okay, interesting. Any other thoughts what, what he meant by that? Well, I'm not a Christian, but I, uh, I, I think the concept is good. Although, um, based on the history of humanity. <laughs> Anything can be abused. <laughs> yeah. Traditional religion can be abusive sometimes. Traditional religion will fail us. Denominational structure will fall short. And Jesus didn't say, come to Judaism and find rest. And he certainly didn't say, come to Christianity, find rest. There was no such thing as Christianity in his day. You know what he said? Come to me and you'll find rest for your souls. It's one thing to break away from the busyness of the pace of life. It's another thing to find lasting peace in our souls by being in right relationship with God. Let's look carefully at the incredible words spoken by this man known as Yeshua, called Rabbi by his followers, and hailed to this day by tens of thousands of Jews as our Messiah. He really described the condition of our race when he, he spoke about people being weary and burdened. It was true in first century Galilee, it's true today in the 21st century world. And then he said something very interesting. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And what was he saying? Well, part of the imagery is this. All of his hearers were familiar with farm life and they had seen animals wearing yokes, carrying heavy burdens, pulling loads, being pushed to the limit. Just like so many of us. Not so with Jesus. The, the burden that he gives us frees us from turmoil and gives us peace. The yoke that he gives us to wear fits just right. <laughs> you may say to me, listen, I got enough problems of my own. The last thing I need to do is carry somebody else's burden. Well, the words of the old song by Bob Dylan, you gotta serve somebody. You know, you're already carrying a burden. Whether it's the burden of proving your worth or finding acceptance or getting ahead of the competition or, or going through a, a painful divorce or, or having some kind of life controlling habit, you're already carrying a burden. What Jesus is saying is this, exchange the burden you're carrying for the one that I'll give you and you'll find my burden by coming to me and sitting at my feet and learning what I have to say, and putting my teachings into practice. That's what Jesus says. 1971, I exchanged the heavy burden I was carrying for the one that he gave, and I have never been the same since then. What do you have to say about all this? How can we find true rest? It's music for me. I just play music to kind of find my own place. 
Wow. Um, would I be the person to uh, say yes or no, or I guess try to define how to do that? Um, no. Yoga. I'm on my way to a yoga class right now. I don't really know what would be the best way to kind of get people to rest more because it's such a high competition market and everything, so everybody's always fighting for different things. A Christian leader from Scotland once said, most of God's people are contented to be saved from the hell that is without. They're not so anxious to be saved from the hell that is within. Did you get that? Many people think that the goal of religion is to save us from some future hell, not realizing that there's a hell within, something that rages in our soul, something that steals our peace and joy, something that drives us and robs us of our rest. Have you been saved from that hell? Traditional religion, with all of its beauty and power, has its limitations because it, it can't deliver us from that hell that is within. But there's a wonderful lesson we can learn from the Sabbath, and we can learn it in particular from Jesus, the one who called himself the Lord of the Sabbath. Now let's remember the Sabbath as a day when we cease from our own efforts and rest in God. Yeshua is telling us that it goes one step further than that. We can strive and try our best and work our hardest to please God, but all of our efforts still fall short. We can pray several times a day or, or read the holy books or deprive ourselves of food and drink or give all our money to the poor, and we still won't be free from that hell that rages within, that hell that comes when we're not in right relationship with God. What Yeshua says to us is, come to me and put your trust in what I've done for you and cease from your striving and cease from all your efforts and cease from trying to please God and receive the gift of my rest. What he's saying to you, friend, is this. Come to me and you will find rest. <laughs>